My name is Dick Bradford and up until November of last year I had for 25 years been the principal design engineer and the energy engineer for Barnsley MPC and I suppose really it was my vision uh, to uh, get biomass installed into Barnsley. My name is Graham Wingate, I'm mechanical services manager for Berners-Lee Homes. Uh, I've worked for Barnsley Council for 26 years. I'm a commercial heating engineer, combustion engineer. So I've always worked with the boiler plant in Barnsley properties and I'm now responsible for all the heating to the 19,000 dwellings that we currently have as an housing stock. Barnsley, of course, sitting over what was the largest coal field in England, clearly had a coal burning policy that had gone back for decades. But of course, with the closure of the mines, things had to change. There was no longer the security of supply that had been enjoyed in the past. But there was also another problem. The problem was one of environmental pollution. Coal is the most polluting uh, fuel that one can burn in terms of its carbon emission into the atmosphere. Now, Sheffield Road Flats, this complex here, um, was the ideal starting point. The council had uh, very courageously adopted a biomass implementation policy in June of 2004. At that point in time, they had never installed a biomass scheme. This was going to be the first one. You're dealing with quite large installations as these are, then the alternative energy sources, like heat pumps and things like that, really aren't practical in this scale. This scale of things has to be dealt with by fairly hefty plant. This block had two coal-fired boilers in it. Buckley House had two coal-fired boilers in it. They'd come to the end of the useful life. Repair spares were no longer available from that boiler manufacturer. We did a decent homes programme on the block of flats which was a £1.8 million investment to kitchens, bathrooms, the dwellings, and we also did the boiler plant. It seemed logical at the time that we went with biomass as it was an emerging technology. It burns wood chip at the moment. We only buy wood chip that comes from a sourced farm, so it is coppiced willow. It's a fully renewable crop that then is delivered in by a tractor and trailer and we buy that in 20 cubic meter uh, loads. There is one big loop underground main goes between all the three blocks of uh, 166 flats. Any one boiler house is pumping heat into that main at 80 degrees. Throughout the three tower blocks, there is then rising mains which take it up to the tenants. We always keep that loop and those rising mains full of hot water at 80 degrees so that should they turn their heating on they've got instant draw off they're not waiting for a dead leg of heat to draw so they've got instant heat so we maintain the loop temperature they then govern what goes into their individual property the biomass boilers that we've got is a 150 and a 120 kilowatt in winter we run both of them as load boilers in summer we can drop that down to one because all we're supplying is basically the domestic hot water requirements. We're still sending the heat into the loop at the same temperature, but the draw off is only hot water. We, like other authorities, have an ESCO contract with the boiler manufacturer. An ESCO contract is basically a supply and deliver for all the services. Supply of heat, supply of maintenance, now we pay for that maintenance and we pay for spare parts, but we don't purchase the wood chip directly. The boiler manufacturer purchases that wood chip. What they then do is they charge us for heat and there is a set price per megawatt hour. And the heat that these boilers generate, it runs through a heat meter. So all the heat that's coming out of there goes through a heat meter. That heat meter reading's recorded, given to the boiler manufacturer weekly, and that's what works us out a monthly bill. And that's how we pay for energy on this side. We service these boilers every three months. I think that could be stretched to six months. The only problem with this is the quality of the fuel. If wood is wet, it's difficult to burn and that ups the maintenance. But that's no different than the coal fire plant I've got. I was able to secure grant funding from four different sources. The total scheme cost was 1.7 million, uh, but 1.4 of that would be for the cost of the infrastructure, which had to be done anyway. 
the 350,000 that it cost to install biomass boiler plant and gas boiler plant was all grant funded, didn't cost the council a bean. All the council had to pay for is what it would have had to pay for anyway, which was replacing all the infrastructure within the buildings in terms of pipe work and radiators, stuff like that, which it would have had to have done whatever the final fuel was going to be, be it gas or anything else. The process of gaining grants is uh, quite long-winded. It's not actually that difficult, but there's an awful lot of uh, bureaucratic paperwork that has to be ploughed through, um, and it's quite time-consuming, um, and you don't get the answers back quickly as you would like. Uh, and, and so that tended to be a, quite a bit protracted, but it would have been on any scheme. Uh, but the fact that we, we, we got everything we asked for uh, was, was quite, uh, quite encouraging and pleasing. Yeah, there, there were a bit, bit of disruption, which is natural, there would be. But it didn't affect my eating. Individual tenants weren't left without heat more than probably about a day or so while their individual flat was having the radiators and pipe work replaced. There was never a situation where the whole site or any major part of the site was shut down. Uh, new services were put in alongside existing ones and then the changeover would take place on a flat by flat basis and then eventually the old systems could be removed. Because if anything goes wrong there's a gas boiler at the but other we... side in Buckley. If anything goes wrong here while they repair it, they turn it over to gas. So you've got, you yeah, still got eating all the time, you, you know, you, you're not short of eating. We weren't left cold. No. Put it that way. One of the biggest pitfalls is a general lack of understanding of the technology in the engineering community. So one has to be extremely careful when seeking advice from others that they actually have the expertise to advise that they're not just talking theory. Coming onto the balcony, there is a difference, a noticeable difference in the air freshness. The advantages that the tenants have seen as a consequence of these works have been a much quieter environment. Uh, prior to this, of course, there would be regular coal deliveries, pneumatic coal deliveries, very noisy, nerve grinding stuff. There is no longer black coal dust blowing about and the front of the flats look white and clean, which they didn't when we were having coal delivered. On average now, with the rate that we charge on an hourly rate, these type of dwellings would be paying approximately £600 um, a year for heating. On the heat meters, the average cost in these three blocks of flats is 300 quid a year. So they've half the outlay that they will be spending on energy. In the last what, five years or so since we did this installation. Uh, we've literally had busloads of visitors, you know, from sort of Cornwall to Cumbria and uh, you know, Hastings to Hull and all points in between, uh, because uh, there is a great enthusiasm for renewable technologies coupled with a great fear of how to do it. What we did here had not been done in this country before, um, and uh, there's always a certain amount of concern as to whether or not it's going to work. And when it does work, it gives you a wonderful feeling. We used to have coal dust all over the place. The windows, they had to be cleaned every, every week, every week, right? And then, when we got this in, new stuff, and what they call it? Biomass. They, biomass, right? It's cleaner, it's better off, way better off, and it's warmer. <laughs>